Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Got another good one for y'all today. If anybody's ever tore down a hydraulic cylinder before, I, some may know, some may not know that this is a bear of a job, especially if you don't have anything to do it with. So today I'm gonna show y'all how to build a manual jig, more or less, to tear one of these dudes down. So it's not real complicated, it's pretty easy, but you gotta have a few things. And without any further ado, guys, let's get after it and let's get started. Okay, the biggest thing with fooling with these hydraulic cylinders is, is how to hold them down. Now, this one right here is pretty good size. This come off a of case backhoe. I think it's a 580. I'm not 100% sure on that one. But if you can hold the barrel, that's what this is right here, then you're in good shape. Most common ways of holding a hydraulic cylinder is like on a big heavy welding table. That's uh, usually your best bet. Um, what I'm going to be doing is for the, the service truck build, if anybody's following on that, I'm going to build that one for my workbench on the, on the back of it. So all you need to do, pretty much real simple, is you need something, some form of pin that'll fit in the eye right here. Now all hydraulic cylinders are different, but they're the most common sizes out there are smaller cylinders is one inch um, all the way to inch and a half. There's some inch and three eighths I think out there too. And two inch and I think this one right here is two and three quarter if I'm not mistaken. Now that's all you know American sizes now overseas and stuff like that. There'll be uh, probably a lot of 25 millimeter. There'll be a lot of probably 50 millimeter as well. And you know metric versus you know standard you know common sizes but most of the time measure your cylinders that you're going to be doing the most and then find a pin more or less that that's that size i don't have any stock that's that big this is a two inch pin right here there's a piece of 1018 coal roll but i do have this bushing that come out of a reynolds pan that does fit this i got a nice fit in here and this bushing will fit this pin right here so that should be simple i don't have to do a whole bunch of machining now so this is stuff i have on hand so this is what we're going to use so uh let's get to building the jig
I do believe he has a problem. That's water. That's oil. Well, a little bit of oil with a lot of water in it. I've never seen just pure water run out of a hydraulic cylinder. All right, so we got our two inch pin here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my bushes on. That second one may be too much. We'll just try with one. Roll it. Knock it around a little bit. There's a block in there. Uh -oh. Oh, and it's selling it too. Uh -oh. On. Back to forklift fell from under it. Oh. All right, that's on there. I think my block's a little too thick. You can see it's standing up pretty good. I think that's gonna work though. That looks good to me. Maybe asking why I don't have the other bolts in here. I got two missing. Uh, biggest reason is I didn't have any others. I thought I had four, but I didn't. So that's the big reason for that. So down here, I think this block is a little tall and it really needs to be up under the uh, barrel here. So I need to find me like a two by six or something to slide under there. And the other big thing is too, when we go to torquing on this dude that, uh, we're gonna have to put like a clamp right here, maybe another block on top, or right down here really, so that the barrel doesn't try to slide off the side. I haven't had that problem before, but on a big cylinder you usually do. So let's go ahead and see if we can't break this dude open. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is get this gland end off right here. Now most of them are just threaded on some of them are loctited and all kind of stuff, but this one right here has actually got a captive screw. I'm sorry. That's right here. It's just a flathead, almost like a sheet metal screw. On these cases, I know you do have to take that out before you can break this gland, so it's one thing that you gotta look out for. Had to get a socket on it. Ugh, that joker's tight. Let me go get a socket. A lot of guys will take a really big pipe wrench and get on this gland. I don't know if you saw, but it's super thin, so you can't hardly get on it with that. A lot of manufacturers put holes right here into the gland end so you can get a special tool in there. I actually happen to have one of these. This here is an OTC part number 1266. This is a double-ended uh, tool more or less that's it's got two different styles of pins that fit these holes and it's adjustable and there's a little allen screw right here that you can lock it down to get a certain size that you want so these have got dirt all in them like they often do but uh, if you work on a lot of hydraulic cylinders that's a that's a tool that's nice to have Some of these universal tools, they don't fit 100% right. Let's see if the big ones will go in there. I don't think they will. Oh, they might. Oh, yeah. Perfect fit there, actually. It's rare. So, up here on the square end, a three quarter drive ratchet fits it, or a pull handle. And you just, I would say you reef down on her, but. You don't want to be reef, don't look like. Oh, oh man. Make it get a pipe. 
I may have to tighten this up a little bit. Alright, got to be smarter than the tool you operate. Only slightly though. So up here on the gland end, you're supposed to have a, a spanner that fits these, but I don't have one. So you got to use the next best thing. Flight wrench. That's one that's tight. Now then, we gotta get the barrel off the pin because we gotta have the pin again to get the gland off. Get that drain out a little more. that nut off. Shouldn't be too bad. That's how you tear a hydraulic cylinder down. <laughs> 